chaos. So we seem to have a little bit of a problem. I don't know if it's on my side or if it's on Charlene's side. Um, okay. Um, hey guys, I don't know what happened, but we seem to have lost Charlene there. Um, I hope Charlene comes back. I don't know if it was on her side. Um, Charlene, please come back. Let's just, we'll wait it on a couple of minutes and see if Charlene comes back. Um, and I think it was a connection on her side. Um, yeah. There we go, we're just waiting. Okay, guys, I think there just could be an issue with, with Charlene's um, connection. Um, we just lost her there. And, um, okay. Let me just see if she's coming back. Let me just see if she's there. Um, okay, there, Charlene is there. Okay, Charlene, just send me a request. Here we go. Okay, just wait around. Hi. Here we go. Hi, I don't know what happened. I just lost you. Well, okay. here I am. <laughs> okay. And, and, and you were getting to the part where our, everyone was like, what happened? What happened? And, and it went. I was like, going to bring... <laughs> okay so it's sorry like, about that i am yeah so carry on please yo well um i i when you when you pick up so much weight and at least you've got a baby to show show for the weight that you've picked up but now yeah. you've got thing and um going through all of that um i was in i actually fell into depression now the 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 problem is when you are married to a pastor and you are in front of a congregation and people are looking at you you know there's no way on earth that you will ever openly show that there's something wrong so yeah. i carried on as if nothing was wrong nothing was phasing me i was okay but on the inside, I was, I was, I was completely devastated. Um, mm -hmm. It was at one point, the, the thing is for me was I needed to find an escape. And my escape was, I actually, um, I don't know if you guys know the series called Arrow. It's actually a superhero um, series. Yeah, yeah. I started, started watching this, but I also started making friends also watching um, Arrow um, on Tumblr and making yeah. these friends. And I actually, had, I, was, I was obsessed with, with the series, completely yeah. obsessed with it. Um, but it wasn't because... I really liked that. Yes, obviously I liked the series, but to me, it was an escape from what was currently going on in my life. Um, yeah. I didn't want to face anything. I didn't want to deal with the emotions. Um, at that point, um, when my husband would tell me, but it's going to be okay, we've got a promise from God, I would feel that he was preaching to me. And I just didn't want to... Mm -hmm. it, it, I, I felt you know what, why can't you feel what I'm feeling at the moment? Why can't you feel yeah. the loss that I'm experiencing? Because even though I wasn't pregnant, it felt like I was, I, I lost a child. Yeah, yeah. And that was completely devastating for me. So I completely threw myself into the series, into my online friends, because there I could be, just me. No one knew what I was going through. No one knew the struggle I was going with, uh, going that was going on in my life. It was just me. Um, me, yeah. a person that liked Arrow, and I didn't need to deal with my reality. The problem is if you um, try to hide from reality, eventually somewhere it's going to start catching up. Yeah. And that's what started happening. Because obviously now, 
Um, you have pregnancy announcements. Um, people around you get pregnant. They give birth. You are the pastor's wife. So not that um, it's not that they'd want to hide it from you, but here's my baby. Look at my baby. So what are you going to say to someone? Just keep away. Your, I don't want to see your baby. Because yeah. I just I lost yeah. my baby. So keep your baby away from me. That's how I felt on the inside. But you can't yeah. do that. So yeah. eventually I had to I had to deal with this. But I didn't go for professional help. I obviously, it was a journey that I went through. And I became a master of suppressing, suppressing my feelings very, very well. Um, up until, so basically we didn't, um, we, there's a lot of things that we needed to deal with as a couple as, as well. So for those of you who are going through this, don't forget your husband, even though I felt like he was not feeling my, uh, devastation and my heartache. Um, it was how I perceived it, but it wasn't necessarily the truth. So we had to have very open and honest conversations um, that we needed to deal with um, through through these things that that we were working on. So don't forget your husband. Uh, there are two people, even though we as women are much more emotional, um, yeah. men don't always know how to, to fix the situation. And they're looking at you and they don't know how to make it better. Um, and that's just something that, that I've learned through this, um, is that my husband also has the feelings, even though he doesn't always talk about it. Um, there's, there's two people in this relationship, two people sharing the loss, um, of, of, of this journey. And, um, but yeah, so about last year, the beginning of last year, um, my brother, um, and his wife found out that they were pregnant and what was supposed to be a joyous thing for me was actually my breaking point. Um, it was at that point that I realized that I, um, with all these suppressed feelings, um, and not dealing with it, when this came out, it just opened up this wound and it was like, uh, yeah, I I yeah. just I actually don't have words to express how, how I felt. So on the one hand, I was very happy that I was going to become an aunt. And you can't be angry when someone yeah. gets the blessing. Um, so that's, that's, I mean, it, it's, it's mixed emotions. But now at that point, it was almost nine years that we were going through this journey. And I'm yeah. still sitting without a, a child I'm the oldest. He's my younger brother. And I've been married for almost at that point. It was, I've been married for 12 years and I still don't have a child. You know, you had this idea in your head of giving my parents the, their first grandchild, giving my grandparents their first great grandchild. And now that plan or that that rug is just pulled from under you and mm. nothing is working according to plan. And I can't begin to tell you how, how devastating that is. Um, actually just, just to backtrack a little bit, uh, the endometriosis at one point got so bad that I couldn't even get up in the morning. Um, and when I, it was, they had to put me on, um, cancer patients. Uh, I think it was schedule, schedule seven pain medication that that to put me on just to, to give me a little bit of a relief. So I found the doctor, um, the one year in Pretoria. And then he told me that, um, unfortunately he won't be able to do a laparoscopy. Because if I want to get pregnant, then the more, if, if he does a lapar laparoscopy, then he's going to cut away all the good, um, uh, you can, uh, the, the good stuff that's still left. Yes, 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 um, yes. and, um, he doesn't think it's wise. So now I'm walking with this pain and I'm thinking to myself, is this really worth it? Is it worth yeah. actually? not having a life, being in constant pain, lying in bed the whole time, not being able to enjoy what's going on. And 
uh, a friend or, or actually a colleague of my aunt um, that lives in Cape Town, they gave me a telephone number of a doctor in Cape Town and I phoned him and he spoke to me and he said, you know what? My practice is closing for, for the holidays. But if I listen to what you're saying, I want you to get on a plane. I'll see you Monday morning and I can almost guarantee you, you're going to be um, in my operating room on Tuesday. So wow. I took, I took a chance. I mean, you're at wits, your wits end. My doctor doesn't want to, do anything to help me. And uh, I, I saw him the Monday morning. He said to me, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Now what was wow. supposed to be an hour and a half operation uh, for normal laparoscopy ended up being three hours. Um, the endometriosis actually, mm. when I was diagnosed with endometriosis, it was stage two. Now it advanced so much. It was stage four. It was wow. everywhere. It was, it was literally it curled up uh, um, in my kidneys. That's why it, it took so long because it was so delicate and he needed to make sure that if I mean, one wrong move and he, I could have bled to death um, on, on that operating table. But in any case, so he put me or he gave me a window um, of about four months be before the endometriosis would um, grow back. And I didn't get pregnant in that four months. Um, then he put me on an uh, estrogen blocker. And I got every possible side effect, even the side effects that were in fine print that they never yeah. hear of. I got that. And I just decided after four months, um, I started getting anxiety attacks. Now, I am not an anxious person at all all <laughs> uh, yeah. and i'm i'm a singer actually i'm a worship leader and it was so bad that if when i stood on stage that my throat would close um that i couldn't i couldn't sing that that was how bad it was and then just one evening i just said this was uh, i'm done with this i don't care if the endometriosis comes back with a vengeance at this point i'm done I'm done. And I yeah. just went to Turkey. Um, I just stopped the injections completely. Um, but God just did an amazing miracle in my body. Um, the, the year after, um, we actually had someone that came uh, to our church and he prayed for me. He didn't even know what was going on um, in my body. And I just took, took the prayer and God just, he healed me completely. I've got no pain. You know where I'm sitting now? I haven't had pain uh, for two years now. Um, oh. so I, I know that the endometriosis, I, obviously I, I still have scar tissue, but I know that the yeah. endometriosis is gone. So I, I thank God for that. But yeah, so last year when my brother announced that he was pregnant, uh, or actually his wife was pregnant, um, yeah. We, I, I knew that I needed to do something. So basically nine years worth of um, emotions, suppressed feelings, I finally went and saw a psychiatrist. Um, and they helped, well, she helped me quite a lot uh, through it. Worked yeah. through a lot of issues, obviously. And then, and then at that point, I realized that communication was key. Um, yeah. We we keep quiet too much about what we're going through, about our feelings, because we feel that people are going to feel we complain or people that don't understand um, are going to judge us. And um, yeah. that was the beginning of my healing. Um, being open and honest with my family, I started there. Being open and honest with my family about what was going on with me, what I was experiencing, the emotions that I had to go through, and it was in in we were, I was in such a good place then, opening up about my feelings that I was able to help my mom plan my sister-in-law's um, uh, baby shower, which which was normally a, a, a very hard thing for me to do. Um, yeah. But to me, it was don't make decisions on my behalf because now obviously everyone feels, oh, you know, about this thing going on in my life. Maybe we shouldn't tell you about what's going on. And, and yeah. I just decided, you know what, don't, don't make decisions on my behalf. Give me a choice to say yes or no yeah. about what's going on. So 
My nephew was born last year in July, and I can't believe he's turning one already this year. Um, he's he's getting so extremely cute. But um, last year, about oh, well, I think it was about October, or just the beginning of October, I had another miscarriage. Um, but it was on at five weeks, um, and that was now obviously due to stress. And uh, I I knew that there were a lot of things that I needed to 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 change. I'm an accountant, so I work from deadline to deadline. And uh, yeah. so, apart from nutritional changes that I made, um, I needed to look at stress levels and and stuff as well. And uh, in March this year, we decided to do another cycle. Uh, but a uh, fertility cycle, but through the doctor here uh, in Cape Town, uh, okay. much better, much cheaper. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, it was also unsuccessful, and oh. um, that actually prompted me to start my platform um, because I realized um, actually now from the first of of May, it it marked our ten ten years that we've wow. um, gone through this infertility okay. and. I know that uh, you know there's there's a lot. I'm, I was actually quite shocked to hear how long you guys have 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 gone through your through your story as well. So you know, opening up um, about all of this, you you hear heartbreaking stories. You know, when yeah. you go through your own journey, um, there's a lot of things that you feel is very overwhelming, and it is. But I think yeah. when we start opening up ourselves to hear other people's stories, you you just hear heartbreaking stuff, and you think, you know, the things that I've gone through almost seem so insignificant when I listen to other people's stories and and experiences. And um, but yeah, it's 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 not an easy road. It's it's no, hard. It's not. Hard. Definitely not. But yeah, so I, I just want to say thank you for sharing that with us. And again, we the reason we doing we do this is because we want to tell other women that there are women out there that's also going through the same thing. Don't be afraid to share your your story with other women, um, because your your you sharing your story could actually just mean you encouraging someone else that's going through this journey that just need to speak about it. Um, and again, speaking about it is healing. So Definitely. yeah, I just want to say thank you so much. Um, are you st- so you now you you obviously with a fertility clinic in Cape Town, um, yeah. and and you're not giving up. That's all I want to hear that you're not giving up. You're staying I'm on not, your journey. <laughs> I'm not giving up. Um, yeah. I, I must say, yeah. I must say, uh, we finally, um, we're finally also at a point where we've we've we have a lot of peace about the situation um yeah. and also i think we also we had to make a decision to be content in our marriage with each other yes, um yes. you know our marriage was we we wanted to get married um because we love each other and we saw a future for us together so having children is basically an add on to that yeah. so whether it happens or not and I, I still believe god is going to give me me a child yeah but whether it yeah. happens or not it doesn't change the relationship between my husband and i um yeah. our marriage wasn't formed because of children it was formed because of the two of us so i think yes. that's also something that that you need people need to understand as well um when they're going through this that uh, your be content with what you have and work yeah. through issues together yes it's not it's not easy it's it's really difficult um i can't yeah. say it's easy no one that's going through this can say it's easy but yeah. there are ways to deal with it find find the content that you have between your husband and yourself so yeah, yeah. perfect thank you very much again for joining us and again we wish you all the best Um, it was lovely chatting to you tonight, and uh, yeah, we just will keep you in prayer and keep all the other women in prayer. And um, thank you very much, Charlene. Have a great Thanks evening. Thanks, so and appreciate you having us. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Bye.